name is Timothy Trespass, and I'm a human being who's found himself targeted. Um, this is one of my last kitchen talks in this apartment we're moving. Uh, but I just want to show you briefly what I'm doing. I have here a pot containing all of the rinds, uh, peels, cores, and bits of all the fruit uh, that I've eaten in the past week or so. Uh, not all, but most of it. And, you know, papaya seeds and lemon rinds for the... Uh, I can't think of the word, I'm sorry. But the stuff that's in the rinds, the lemon rinds, and bits of papaya for the enzymes, and cloves for the eugenol, and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you know, citric, citrus fruits, and a little bit of rice, for brown rice for the grain. And what I'm doing is right now just sort of making a mash with uh, this wonderful masher that this wonderful people sent me. Uh, thank you very much, by the way, for that delicious food. Um, and uh, I'm boiling it lightly for a little bit to soften it up and make the, uh, you know, the liquid, which is uh, filtered, just filtered water. Um, excuse me. To, wow. Very, very stressful moment. I just had to work out this whole moving. When are we going with the landlord guy? And why was the bathroom locked? And, you know, they called the police on me last night because I fell and broke the bathroom door because it was locked. But anyway, um, in with the good air, out with the negative, in with the positive, out with the negative. Conscious decision. Anyway, um, so I'm, you know, making this mash or whatever you want to call it, the compote of the bits and pieces of the fruits, and uh, I haven't started with vegetables yet, but um, with the fruits and stuff, so once this boils for a few moments, it has, it's almost done actually, I'm not going to boil it to death, just basically, you now some people strain it, uh, but I'm just going to let it, uh, so now we turn it off, I'm going to let it cool a little bit, and what I have over here, as you can see, it's going crazy in this cup. I don't know if you can see exactly, but um, yes, in this cup, I have how can we do this? Let's see, whoop, yeah. uh, some amazing Fleischmann, Fleischmann, whatever active <laughs> yeast. And my friends, this yeast is active, uh, it's just this basic uh, active dry yeast, which is, uh, I can't remember the name of the species, um, but it's, I believe, a bacteria or a mold, I don't remember what yeast is, but <laughs> one or the other, and you just add some warm water and give it a, a moment to activate. Now this particular one is activated way more than any of the others I've ever used, and there are people who say you're not supposed to use this kind of metal spoon with this stuff because the, the, um, when I put this yeast in here, it's going to die, but anyway, that, that, the, the, the acid is doing something to the metal of the spoon, and you don't want to get the metal ions from the, the particles from the spoon into the yeast or into the mash, but whatever. Um, let's rinse that off. And what I'm going to do once that cools down is, uh, I don't have the sugar to show you, but I'm using, uh, I might as well show you because it's really quite wonderful. Uh, where did I put it? This wonderful thing is called um, panela.
and it is uh, sugar cane juice that's basically dried and it's just going to be mixed together and allowed to sit um, in uh, well, uh, this is actually from a, a kombachu kit uh, kombachu is a, a yeast and bacteria that grows on tea and um, so we basically do the same thing so adding maybe a quarter sorry a quarter um, um, of this cane sugar. It's basically just cane sugar juice. It's evaporated. It has all of the amino acids, all of the trace elements, and the micronutrients, and um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, panic attacks. And um, you know, everything still in it, the molasses is not washed off, it's just cane juice that's dry. And as far as sugars go, it's probably more healthy because it has everything in it, as including the sugar, whereas when you use white sugar, it's just the sugar part. And uh, I, I really love the taste of it. It's very rich, although not nearly as sweet as white sugar. It's really, it's better than any brown sugar I've ever had. Uh, it's so delicious. Anyway, uh, about a quarter of one of those, and I start with because fruit has a lot of sugar in it already. And once this cools, I'm just gonna pour it into the carboy, carboy, and add the yeast once it cools below 100 degrees, and let it sit with the top on. Uh, not too tightly. I don't have the special bubbler thing that has water in it so the CO2 can bubble out but other molds and fungus and spores can't get in. I just leave the top on and I put it loosely or I'll put it on and I'll burp it every once in a while. Um, uh, beverages that are <coughs> fermented with, uh, this yeast is really going crazy, fermented with bubbles like champagne and sparkling wines and such are, um, you know, they have the CO2 is still in them, they're fermented frequently in the bottle, and uh, so I'm sort of doing a half and half kind of in the bottle thing, but anyway, um, that's my plan, and uh, this will be the second, uh, the second one of these things that I've done, the first one was my attempt at, uh, oh, where is it, uh, at uh, dandelion wine, and what I made was, uh, can you see it in the light? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, what I made was, uh, uh, it's sort of a brown uh, dandelion ginger clove uh, based. Thing and I'd like to distill it off, but it's uh, so that's the plan. And thanks for watching.